Winning Cures Everything. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. Welcome in. It is Winning Cures Everything. It is Sunday night, May 23rd. I am Christopher Giannini. I will be hosting this evening. Gary and I are doing a little switcheroo on you because things happened today that moved me. And I called Gary and I said, hey, man, I really want to go today. If you're if if you're not already prepared, if you're not ready to do it and and, you know, you don't have a ton of stuff to talk about. Let me do it. If you don't mind. He gave me the OK. He had plenty of things that he wanted to talk about. He saw that I was a little passionate about it. Uh, I appreciate him giving me in. So um, you get me tonight and uh, and I'm fired up I'm fired up. It's, it's been a pretty fun sports weekend and, uh, and I'm glad to be a part of this. We are Winning Cures Everything. You can find us at winningcureseverything.com. Gary has put together the website, worked really hard on it. Everything that we do, you will find there. Uh, all of the stuff uh, from SBR, all of our YouTube videos, it, every every bit of the content, if we write anything, um, all of our podcasts, if you miss anything or want to know where to go, you always go to winningcureseverything.com. That's the website. Um, it, if you want to get in touch with me, Gary gets on to me. I, I miss these things all the time. You can find my Twitter handle. I'm at Chris B. Giannini. It's just my name. It's really easy. It's right there if you're watching the YouTube video on the screen. And uh, if you don't have Twitter, you don't like the social media stuff, but you want to say something to me, you want to get any information to me, uh, you can email me at uh, Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Um, so those are the easiest ways to get in touch with me. And I always appreciate when folks reach out. We have a good time with you guys, and uh, and it means a lot. So that's how you can get in touch with us. The guys who pay the bills, SBR, uh, sportsbookreview.com, slash NCAAF. That is who uh, takes care of Gary and I. We give them the college football content that they ask for. You'll get that once a week during the off season, and we love doing it. But during the week, every day on YouTube – SBR picks on YouTube, you will find MLB show. You will find an NFL show. You will find NBA show. You will find a hockey show. They, they've got so much sports content. If you're looking for gambling information, um, that's where you're going to go. That's where you're going to find SBR pays the bills. They take care of us. They give out the best content around and uh, for, for sports gamblers. And, uh, and, and we really appreciate our partnership. Go check them out if you're looking for gambling information. I'm going to get to the show because I'm fired up. I'm going to start off with baseball, okay? All right, I'm wearing my Padre shirt. I don't know if the camera picks it up and the uh, the thing cuts it off the way Gary has it set up, but but I am wearing my Padre shirt, and my guy, Fernando Tatis Jr., has had himself a weekend, my friends. We're talking a stat line in two games of five of six with two bombs, one of them a grand slam, six RBI in the last two days. After today's game, you got a real sweet moment. He went three for three with the two home runs in the in the in the grand slam um, as one of them. Uh, real sweet moment with him and his dad uh, just kind of hugging next to the dugout, uh, you know, after the game or whatever. And and he's just lighting it up. He's also one of the best defensive uh, shortstops in the game. But this guy is he's, – he's, he's one of the most electrifying players to watch play baseball right now. And if you're not paying attention to the Padres, you're missing out on great, great baseball. Uh, this is a team that doesn't always have the best starting pitching, but they're one of the few teams in the MLB that actually has a pretty good bullpen. Um, and, and which is kind of the inverse of, of, of a lot of the other teams that are going on right now. Um, and, and so he has, he has had himself a weekend and, uh, and, and I just, I can't be more proud to, to, to love and support the, the Padres and, and what he's doing. Pretty incredible. Check out the Padres. Second topic of the day, staying on baseball, but man, ESPN is just the chap in my ass. Okay. My Red Sox have been one of the top three teams in baseball the entire season. Okay? They also have one of the biggest fan bases and they're one of the biggest, uh, like, organizations, teams in the sport. And they haven't had a single game on Sunday Night Baseball. But every time I turn around, Sunday Night Baseball has the same teams on week in and week out. 
So we just had two weeks in a row of the Cardinals. The car, like I know the Cardinals are good and and everybody loves Yadier Molina and and all that. And it's fine, but why are we getting them two weeks in a row? Like you couldn't you couldn't find another team that to to, to showcase. So so I went I went looking to see is there a schedule? When will my Red Sox have Sunday night baseball? Sunday night baseball is the biggest baseball game of the week. That's what it's supposed to be. All right. Uh, it is the biggest television production for a baseball game of the week. And 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 it's just, it's a big deal, I think, to have your team play on Sunday Night Baseball. So to get two weeks of the cards was, was just frustrating. And so I went to look. The Red Sox aren't on until July. And it's the two middle weeks in July. And what's funny is they're both Yankee games. We played the Yankees, one at Fenway, one in, one in New York. And so you're going to get Red Sox Yankees, Red Sox Yankees two weeks in a row. A, there's a lot of people out here in the world that don't give a damn about that rivalry. Now, I still think it's a huge rivalry in baseball, but I don't want to just watch the Red Sox play the Yankees. All right. And vice versa for the Yankees. Like, I'd like to see the Yankees play some other teams as well. All right. But hold on to your hats. If you don't think you're going to get enough Yankee love, in the month of July, you're going to get those two Red Sox games? Oh, yeah. The week before that, you're going to get Yankees-Mets. You're going to get three weeks in a row where ESPN is going to showcase the same damn team. I don't know who in the hell is making the schedule up there. I don't know what their rhyme or reason is behind that. You don't think there's another game that you can put on that might not draw a good crowd or get a big number or, or, or give people a, a good, fun ball game? You think three weeks straight in the month of July. So if you hate the Yankees, like I do, if they weren't playing my team, ESPN's just, I'm, I'm just not watching it. I'm going to find something else to do. But you, in the month of July, you own baseball. You own it. There is no other sport going on. Hockey will be finished by then. The, the NBA playoffs will be finished by then. There will be nothing else happening throughout the month of July. You own television. And I'm telling you, you're going to wear people out with this stuff. I don't I don't think you're going to grow the sport. I don't think you're going to grow. You might do a good number. Congratulations. There are a lot of fun teams out here in the MLB right now that are playing their ass off, and they're really fun. Some of these teams are young and athletic and exciting to watch. They're putting up a bunch of runs. Their pitchers are exciting to watch. And, and you're, not, you're not even putting them on TV. You're not showcasing the product. You're literally just whoring yourself out to, to TV ratings, to numbers. But I believe that you'll get numbers if you put a good product out there. I believe that it might not start the game with a big number, but if you get a couple of innings in and it's a good baseball game and, and things start trending on Twitter the right way, you're, you're going to get a bigger number than had you just put two mega market teams up there. I, I don't I don't understand it. It isn't. It isn't computing my brain, but I also understand these people are whores to numbers or whores to ratings. They just sell themselves to it, and they don't care the product that's going to come out there. And, and yes, Red Sox Yankees is awesome. How many stories do we think we're going to get from Alex Rodriguez by the second weekend of Red Sox Yankees two in a row? I mean, what do we think he's going to tell us that second weekend that we didn't get in the first game? Because it's going to go four and a half, five hours. They always do. So you, you think he's going to have another five hours worth of material? Oh, yeah. That'll also be the third Yankee game in a row A-Rod will be doing on Sunday Night Baseball. If I'm Alex Rodriguez, man, I'm calling in sick for the week, too. I, I don't want to be there three weeks in a row. No, no, no. I, I, all of a sudden, my stomach's bubbling. I got the shits. I ain't showing up. You're going to make me talk about the same damn team that I played for. I, I only got so many stories. I don't know what they're doing. I don't understand. Like, it doesn't make sense to me how how they're figuring out this is the way. And if that's, if that's what you wanted to do, then, then put the Yankees on early. And then, like, maybe once a month you can showcase them. Same thing with the Dodgers. Same thing with these other big market franchises. I know they have large fan bases, and I know a lot of people tune in to watch them. But giving them three weeks in a row is not smart. Just my opinion. I don't like it. We'll get off of that. We'll move on to some of these other playoff games that uh, these sports that are that are in the thralls of their playoffs. 
We don't talk a lot of NBA here, okay? But right now, I'm doing this show at halftime of the Grizz game, okay? Walked away from it at halftime, and, man, they are giving the Jazz all the hell they want, all right? This Memphis Grizzly team does not belong, okay? I understand that, all right? I acknowledge the fact that if this game goes 4 nothing, th- this series goes 4 nothing, it won't surprise me, okay? This young team is not ready yet, and they don't belong. But don't don't tell them that, okay? They're here to play. They're exciting to watch. They're the best defensive team out here with the, the way they are. They block shots. Nothing's easy in the paint. They get more steals than any team in the league. That if you if you make a lazy pass, if you just come up with just a sluggish dribble, they are picking your pocket and they are taking the ball the other way. They are giving you fits. Steph Curry, if he missed three pointers, they couldn't win because Steph got no points in the paint. Steph drove to the basket this year better than he's ever driven. And in that, he scored more points in the paint this year than I think he maybe ever have. All right? He played the Grizz. That shit got shut down. He scored nothing in the paint. They surrounded him. Draymond got nothing. Everything was fought for. Every inch of the court they covered. And and I know they're not playoff ready. I know they're not going to, to go forward very far in this thing but but man they're a young team they, this is everything ESPN and the NBA and Turner wanted the Pelicans to be and the, they're the Memphis Grizzlies they wanted Zion to be this well guess what he's not but you know who is John Morant John Morant is I never in my life thought that there'd be another Grizzly that I would ever love as much as Tony Allen okay that he is my favorite Grizzly of all time and I'm talking the door doesn't shut for five seconds before Jaw comes into my life and just blows me away. This kid plays with such energy, such excitement. He's he's all over the court. He's magic with the basketball. And and I he, he's just a joy to watch. I'm so glad to be from Memphis and have the Grizzlies and the way this team fights and represents. We're not a basketball city. We're not New York. We're not L.A. We're not, you know, Detroit basketball or Chicago. We're not any of these places that's that's big and famous. We're some backwoods, country bumpkin-ass town, okay? That's what Memphis is, all right? We're, we're not even a has-been. We were a never were. That's what Memphis is. But you know what? You don't want to play them. You damn sure don't want to play them. Go ask the Spurs if they want to play us. Go ask the Warriors if they want to play us. Go ask them how they feel about it. Because their ass is sitting at home right now. And we're going on and we're playing basketball. I love it. I love it so much. Speaking of that, L.A. teams, both of those guys lost. I cannot. So Gary and I talk a little bit of NBA, and I say all the time, there are only three teams that I kept up with all season that I actually follow, that I actually watched a lot of their games. I watched my Celtics. I watched my Grizz. And I watch this Mavs team. I think this Mavs team is really good. I do. I've I've told people that all year long. I haven't followed the NBA super close, but I've followed this Mavs team, and I think they're good. I love Luka Doncic. He's one of my favorite players in the world to watch. I think he's special, and I'll be damned if he didn't come up bigly against the Clippers and against Kawhi. Man, Kawhi is a playoff monster, and he is somebody you don't want to go up against if you don't have to. But – Luca didn't back down. Luca didn't back down not one bit, not from him or anybody else. And uh, I, th- I think the Clippers got a fight on their hands. Lakers, the same thing. Man, the Suns came to play, all right? And I don't know what in the hell's going on with, with LeBron. I'm, I'm done trying to figure that whole thing out. The, the inconsistencies in the league just dr- drive me insane. You know, there's a guy from the Pacers that, that broke the, the, the COVID protocols or whatever when he went out, and he got suspended for the play-in game. Like, he couldn't play in a game that could have taken the Pacers out of making the playoffs or whatever. And, and that was a big deal. LeBron does the same thing, but he's LeBron. And so we give him a pass. We get, like like who was that guy? It, it, you know, for in Indiana that that broke it. Uh, he was not LeBron. Okay, it doesn't matter who his name is. It doesn't matter who he is or where he's from. He's not LeBron. And and I I get that it's a television show, and I get that LeBron is a ratings monster, and I get that he's the best player on the court. It, it, I just don't understand why you have to have special rules for for him. I don't understand, and it's not just a him thing. I don't think anybody should play under different rules. 
You know, everybody, everybody plays under the same umbrella. We all agree to the same thing. That's it. And, and so, you know, part of me believes in karma sometimes, some days I don't, but I just think that's sports karma. You know, that's the, that's the gods of basketball saying, you know what, you're not getting this one. And the Suns take game one. The most exciting thing that happened in the NBA was this, this, this was hard to, hard to even watch a little bit. The, the, the Knicks Hawks game, Madison Square Garden was jumping like, I don't know that I remember seeing it jump like that in my entire life because when I started caring about basketball, I don't know that the Knicks were very good from that point forward. And they were jumping. And it was exciting. And it was crazy. And it was chaos. And that was a crazy game. But when Trey Young hit that dagger at the end, and the whole place went silent. it, it the, We use the phrase in sports. It's, it's the cliche thing to say. It sucked the oxygen out. We say that because without oxygen, you can't breathe. It's just silence. And, man, I don't – I mean, you couldn't hear anything. It was, in, it was insane how it went from being so electric to just blank. I mean, it was the definition of somebody turned the lights out in a party, and they just pulled a plug, and the speakers all went quiet. Just, just crazy uh, to watch. And you know, I, I still, I still like the Knicks. Maybe, maybe I shouldn't. Maybe that, maybe the Knicks are gonna nix it up. And, and, you know, I don't know, but that was, that was the most insane thing that I've seen in the playoffs so far of just watching the first two days of it go on. That was, that was pretty nuts. Now we get on to the, to the real playoff sport, the sport that I love, even when it's not in the playoffs, the sport that I follow all the teams, not just the teams that I like. Playoff hockey has been unbelievable. I tried to convince Gary to watch a little hockey this weekend. Um, the other day when we did our live show Thursday, I believe it was. And 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 I don't know if he's getting into it or not. But, man, these games have been unbelievable. Our Preds came home, won two in a row, fighting like hell. The Avalanche, who I told him was one of the best teams I may have ever seen, just swept the Blues, who two years ago won the Stanley Cup. And that team's not a whole lot different today than they were when they hoisted the Cup. Man, that, that Avs team is going to be a problem. They're going to be a problem. They're really good. They're really exciting. And I, I, I like watching them. I'd like to see somebody give them a fight. I think if uh, uh, Vegas goes forward with the next round, that's who they'll match up against. And and I think Vegas will put up a better performance than the Blues, but hell, maybe they not. They might not. They really might not. I mean, that, that, the goalkeeper. God, I should know these guys' names better than I do. Goalkeeper for the for the Avs. I think he's given up one goal throughout the whole four games. I mean, he's just a he's just a damn wall. I mean, I I, I haven't seen anything like that in a long time. I mean, this is crazy. And then my Bruins, the Killer Bees, man. That that you're talking about. I like to call, I put it out on Twitter tonight, I, I call this the gentleman sweep, okay? And what do I be about? It's not very gentlemanly, though. You know, it's not very friendly. This is one of those where we're going to give you one just to give you some hope, just to get you excited, just to let you feel like you're you're participating, you're a part of this thing. And then the next four games, we're just going to systematically rip your soul out. And that's what the Bees did to the Capitals this week, Okay. They, they gave them game one, and then after game one, they went into overtime in game two, one, went into double overtime in game three, one, and then game four and game five, overtime wasn't needed, overtime wasn't close. They kind of just beat their ass, and it was, I mean, it was kind of crazy. Hurt real bad. So one of the best things about hockey, if you follow hockey at all, if you're new to hockey, this is a really cool thing, that when a series is over with, they do a handshake line, okay? And I'm talking this is Little League Baseball. We're going by, and we're shaking everybody's hand, and, and, and we're giving everybody on the other team a hug. And it don't matter how nasty the series got, don't matter how bad the blood is, you look a man in the eyes, you shake his hand, you say, good game, okay? Seeing Chara go through the line and all those Boston Bruin guys that he played with for four years 
and and some of those guys he won a cup with, you know, hugging on those guys, putting Char out hurt, putting Char out. It was, it was a it was a weird feeling to have to a be matched up against him, but also b um, to to be the team to put him out, and, you know, because I, I, every Boston fan in the world, if you're a hockey fan, if you're a Bruins fan, everyone they got nothing but positive things to say about Chara, and and he 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 was one of the best. Bru- but there's a reason they had to let him go. I mean, they released him. He didn't. He didn't demand a trade. They didn't. They didn't. They, they released him outright. He was. He was free to go play anywhere because they had these young guys coming up. They were like, dude, we got. We got to get these guys on the ice. They're good, and they are. Man, they are. So, playoff hockey is awesome. Playoff hockey is exciting. If you're not watching, give it a look. Okay, it's on USA and it's on NBC Sports. Give it a look. I don't know your channels. It's Direct TV 220 is the NBC Sports channel. That's where most of them are on. Um, the overflow games go on go on USA. But but it's one of the most exciting sporting events you're gonna watch on TV. Okay. It just is. Now I'm gonna get into the final thing. This is why I asked to take the show over. We're gonna get into the golf. And I know a lot, a lot of people are golf folks. I just hit you with some hockey, and now I'm hitting you with some golf. So if you want to turn the podcast off, you want to turn the video off because you don't give a damn about golf, this is where you can walk away, okay? Now, I'm, an, I'm a grumpy old man. The older I get, the more grumpy I become. And, and, and I whine, I bitch, I moan, and I complain about stuff all the time. I have lately a lot. There will be none of that today. There will absolutely be none of that today. I got to watch one of my favorite golfers of all time have one of the best weekends you could ever imagine happening. If you went to to a Disney producer or Warner Brother and said, I got a sports story to tell, and you wrote this script out, they would say, uh, that's two on the nose. That I can't I can't make that. That's not it's not it's not realistic. That won't happen. The young guns of golf are too good. The old guys will never win. The old guys will never compete. They just physically can't put together four four weekend four rounds, a four day weekend, in order to hang with them. And old man Phil, almost fifty one years old. Not he didn't just hang with them. He he kind of beat their ass all weekend. Phil Mickelson, the oldest man on the. He went up against one of the biggest meatheads golf has to throw at him today in Brooks Kepka. And he outdrove Brooks Kepka all day long. He was activating the glutes. He was flexing the calves. He was hitting bombs like I have never seen before. He has tweaked his game. He has changed his game. to He's always been, I, I've said this for years, one of my best friends, Cameron, and I text a lot about golf. He's about the only guy I text about golf with all the time. But he, he, he loves it. We talk all the time. There's nobody in the world that I trust with an iron in their hand more than Phil Mickelson. He's got the best iron game of anybody in the history of golf. It's not close, by the way. It ain't. What he could do with an iron and a golf ball is better than it. – it's magical, okay? And it doesn't matter if it's from the sand trap, which we saw magic today from the sand trap. It doesn't matter if it's from the rough. It doesn't matter if it's an approach. It doesn't matter if it's a chip. That guy can bump and run. He can flop it. He can make any move with a golf club with an iron. He, he can make the golf ball do anything he wants, okay? He's unbelievable at that. The bomb, though, the drives, man, he was erratic. He scared me at first. I thought this was going to be an ugly day. I thought Brooks was going to get loose. When Brooks birdies one and he bogeys one and we flipped the score, and I thought, oh, this is going to be ugly. It's going to be ugly. And you know what? He didn't hit a lot of big drives. He didn't hit a lot of fairways. He hit a lot of big drives. He didn't hit a lot of fairways, though. It was just magical. It was magical. His brother's on the – the thing that's most unique about this, and this is a part that nobody's telling this story, but Phil Mickelson wasn't even qualified to compete in in the PGA today, this weekend at all. He didn't qualify. All right, he was an invite. 
and he's been an invite to a couple of majors because he's older and because he's not great. If he doesn't qualify, he doesn't always take these invitations. He doesn't always show up because he feels like he should earn it. And I respect that and I appreciate it. He took this invitation. And when it was after Thursday, there was no doubt he was going to be in contention. The way he was playing and the way his game looked Thursday and then Friday, it was just like, whoa, whoa. I am so glad he took a man who did not even qualify for this tournament, came in as an invitee, and then ran the gamut from pillar to post, beat the hell out of everybody they put in front of him. He 20 years ago, Phil would have choked that away. All right? No, no, no. This man is older. He's wiser. This is something I think is incredible. Let me let me see if I can find this tweet. I should have had it pulled up, but never prepared. Never, 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 never prepared. Hang on. Man, this is like the worst radio you could ever have. How do I not have this tweet pulled up? 11 days ago, Phil tweeted this out. I'm about to get there, guys. I promise it's coming. It's good, too. It's going to be worth it. This is from Phil on May 11th. Okay? So, more than 11. Oh, is that 12 days ago? Whatever. I failed many times in life and career. And because of this, I've learned a lot. Instead of feeling defeated countless times, I've used it as fuel to drive me to work harder. So today, join me in accepting our failures. Let's use them to motivate us to work even harder. He sent that out May 11th. This is a man who has acknowledged his shortcomings in the game. He has acknowledged a lot about the game has passed him by. He's acknowledged his flaws, but he doesn't make excuses. He just says, these are things that the game is just better than me at. And I either have to nut up or I have to go home. I think that's really inspirational. I think that's amazing. I'm, I, you know, I, I, I jokes all the time on the show with Gary. Like I fail, I, I suck at a lot of things. I suck at almost everything that I do. I'm not good at anything. I know that I'm my own worst critic, but you know, I, I, I feel like I'm not really good at a lot of things, but I don't quit. The first time Gary ever wanted to to you know to put our podcast on video, I freaked out. I was I was extremely against it, but I didn't want to quit, so I just kept doing it. You know, I'm still not great. I'm, I'm I don't know that there'll ever be a day where I'm comfortable in front of the camera. Um, over time, I've gotten very comfortable in front of the mic. If the camera was turned off, I feel like the production that I would be able to give and put on would be substantially better than what I, what I am able to give, but I don't quit. I just keep working. I just keep going. Same thing in my job, same thing in, 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 in my family, same thing with my, with my marriage and with my kids, things get hard. Listen, I was taught at a very young age by the one man that's supposed to love you no matter what. That when things get hard, you just fucking quit and run away. Okay? Because that's what he did. All right? Things get hard and they don't go your way. Just walk away. Just quit. I'm not good at a lot of things, but I'm but I'm damn sure not a quitter. Okay? I don't run away from challenge. I, I, I'm afraid. That doesn't, doesn't mean I'm not afraid. But, but it just, it, it's cool to see a guy that I've watched... Almost my entire life, play this game that I love and I respect. And he he still finds flaws in his game, and he works hard every day. Adam, I never thought we'd see an almost fifty one year old man win a major. I just I just didn't think it was possible. Last year we saw Tiger. Or two thousand nineteen, was nineteen twenty. We saw Tiger win win the Masters. Nineteen. And, and and then this year we see we see Phil win the PGA. I, I just old guys doing big things. Uh pretty interesting to me. 
guys that have been special for a long time still being special that that's every it's everything that that I that I need in sports it's why I love talking about it I'm never going to be great enough at any of it to do it but but I want to talk about it I want to write about it I want I want it to be not not just a part of my life I want it to be an important part of my life I want it to be something that that moves me to a to a better place that it motivates me to be better or different than I am and it doesn't allow me to sit still and stagnant in in just a life um, I'm always trying to go forward so congratulations Phil that hell of a weekend you gave us hell of a weekend and one of the best Sundays I've had in a in a long time watching you so there you go buddy that's the show, guys. Uh, like I said, hit us up on winningcureseverything.com. You can find all our stuff there. Uh, you can check us out at SBR, that YouTube show, um, once a week. It goes up, I think it's usually by Wednesday, Wednesday evenings. They've got it up live. Uh, you can tweet at me, at Chris B. Giannini. You can email me, Chris, at winningcureseverything.com. And uh, thanks. Thanks for everything. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.